people have occupied the Americas for perhaps as long as 40,000 years. Over these years, they have created great civilizations equaling any found in Europe, Asia, and Africa. In North America, Paleo-Indians hunted the mammoths and mastodons. They were replaced by archaic Indians who lived from 5,000 to 1,000 BC. They left behind remarkable cave art. In at least one instance, they hunted bison, the species known as the American buffalo, by driving them into kill sites on the eastern Colorado plains. But these hunter-gatherers were moving towards becoming agricultural societies. Prior to the arrival of Europeans in 1492, the transition to agrarian cultures had been nearly completed. Indian nations extended across North America. A network of cities flourished as a part of a mound-building culture in the East. In the Southwest, the Anasazi and their contemporary cultures built equally remarkable dwellings. Then in the historical blink of an eye, they all disappeared and were replaced by the configuration of tribes in place at the start of the 17th century, many of which then vanished as a result of European diseases and settlement. During this time, the great cities were replaced by small agricultural villages. Then as the Europeans expanded across the continent, the surviving tribes were pushed ever westward into a constantly redefined and shrinking Indian territory. However, during the middle of the 18th century, two parallel events occurred on the North American continent. The creation of a new type of nation, the United States of America, and the creation of a new kind of Indian culture, the warrior horse culture two remarkable human transformations that would eventually clash in bitter conflict. Two large mammal species played an equally critical role in creating the remarkable Plains Indians culture. One was the horse, an animal brought to the New World by the Europeans. The other, a member of the cattle family, was the American buffalo, indigenous to the continent. The American buffalo can trace its ancestry back to the Pleistocene era, when its relatives roamed among the mastodons, mammoths, giant wolves, and lions. In fact, the buffalo is the lone survivor from that ancient time. A herd animal, the buffalo is covered with long, dark brown woolly hair. It has a massive head, high humped shoulders, and a tufted tail. Fully grown, buffaloes are five to six feet high at the shoulders and can weigh as much as a ton. Like other members of the cattle family, they thrive on grasses. Prior to the 1800s, it is estimated that the buffalo population ranged somewhere between 60 to 80 million. They were found wherever prairie grasses grew, from Canada to Texas, and from the Rockies to Ohio and Kentucky. It was said that when one of the vast herds moved through an area, it kicked up a cloud of dust, darkening the sky. For 10,000 years, buffalo had been hunted on foot by the Native American tribes, but were never the principal source of food and material for the Indian, as the deer or elk were. That changed with the arrival of the Europeans and their horses. The horse was particularly important to the Spanish in their conquests and explorations. The Spanish Iberian Mustang was not a huge grain-fed animal like the horses from Northwestern Europe and the British Isles. It was a desert-bred animal that could live entirely off grasses and go for long periods without water. It was capable of carrying a man in heavy armor over miles of burning desert and dry high plains. In 1680, there was a massive uprising by the Pueblo Indians against their Spanish overlords. When the surviving Spanish fled, they left behind their sheep, cattle, and horses. The Pueblo, a sedentary people having little use for the thousands of Spanish horses, 
simply let them roam free. These horses, thriving on the short grass prairies, formed the nucleus of the great Mustang herds of the Southwest and Southern Plains. This great horse dispersal produced perhaps the most rapid cultural transformation hitherto ever witnessed on the planet. Within 100 years, a number of Native American tribes on both sides of the Great Plains had transformed themselves into nomadic, buffalo-hunting horse cultures, horse cultures with names like the Cheyenne, the Sioux, the Comanche, the Kiowa, and the Arapaho. One hundred years after the great horse dispersal started, most of the remaining North American tribes had horses. But only a few tried the grand economic experiment of developing a true nomadic horse culture. At the same time, the short grass prairie offered a huge unoccupied region for expansion. While unfit for permanent settlement, it was ideal for any group that moved easily with the wanderings of the millions of buffalo. The horse provided the vehicle, and the buffalo provided a virtually inexhaustible supply of high-quality protein, giving the tribes willing to venture onto the plains the chance for rapid population growth. Each of these tribes has a unique story of its transformation into a horse culture. The why has long been lost, but the journey has been recorded. Looking at the Great Plains as a sea of prairie grass, all the eventual nomadic tribes started in the north, three from the eastern shore and four from the western shore. Unlike the other horse cultures, the Navajo and Apache moved into their 18th and 19th century homelands prior to the arrival of the Europeans in the 16th century. They were part of a very large subarctic group generally referred to as the Athabascan-speaking Indians. Their ancestral home covered a large part of Canada's Northwest Territory. Anthropological records indicate these people lived in small family groups were nomadic and hunted caribou. Sometime between 900 and 1400 AD, a group identified as the Southern Athabascans migrated south into present-day West Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. When the Spanish arrived in 1540, they were already split into two distinct groups, the Apache and the Navajo. Each had their own territories and customs. And because of their close proximity to the Spanish, they were the first to tame horses. In fact, in 1659, the Navajo were the first Indians to attack Europeans using horses. At the same time, their Apache relatives used the horse for food and as a beast of burden. The Navajo were more settled than the Apache. Like most tribes who had names for themselves, such as the true ones, only ones, real people, and human beings, the Navajo referred to themselves as Diné, meaning the people. They lived in permanent dwellings known as hogans. These eight-sided buildings were perfect for the desert southwest, remaining hot in the winter and cool in the summer. Capturing horses, sheep, and goats from the Spanish, the Navajo established herds of their own. They became excellent weavers, and their rugs and blankets became highly valued trade goods. The most important person in the Navajo family was the woman, who owned the land, the home, and the livestock. All Navajo life centered around the family, including religious ceremonies. One of the most important was a healing ceremony known as the Night Way. In this ceremony, the Navajo used sand paintings like this one to heal the sick. 